breaking news to contend with and this is another scene bctv 18 exclusive so if we didn't have enough coming to us by way of the gst there's uh, news breaks outside of that as well let's uh, go across now to uh, uh, our colleague manisha natrajan uh, manisha the race for uh, jp infra give us what you know uh, absolutely, Shireen. In fact, uh, we were wondering who's going to take such a debt-ridden company with so many buyers paying for its blood. But it seems 18 bids have already come in, express, uh, initial expressions of interest. And some of the names are really big ones. And that's the interesting part. There's Tata Realty, there's Lodha, there's l &T, the SL Group, IDFC, there's also Kotak Intra, Sare Homes. And a couple of asset reconstruction companies have also bid for it. Uh, the proposal which was actually outlined by IRP was that you, the company which bids has to have 1,000 crore net worth and it should be able to plough in 2,000 crores of rupees to complete the 25,000 apartments which are incomplete. So it seems that the list is pretty reasonable. Some of the big players have already expressed their interest mm. to take over JP Intra Act. And uh, there are more who are interested. So as per the insolvency law, even though 7th November yeah. was the last date, they could actually accept some more even after today. And the process, even if the bids come right up till uh, the 10th of January, which is just 30 days before the closure of 180 days, the bids will be accepted. This, okay. The engagement will start now, Shireen, and the specifics will come in. These are EOIs, we have to remember. So now each of these companies will have to give in yeah. the specifics of how they make money and how will they complete that. Okay, uh, so 18 suitors have uh, put in their expressions of interest. And Manisha, very quickly for the benefit of our viewers, uh, just explain to us what the process is because an IRP uh, is going to be looking into this matter. I believe that there was a meeting of creditors today as well. So where do we go from here? How does this all play out? So now, uh, Shireen, as I understand, uh, IRP will examine all of these expressions of interest. They will ask each of these companies to give more details, engage with them, give specifics and a clear plan on how much will the company bring in, where will that 2,000 crore rupees come in. After they have bought that entire list, they will go back to the court uh, to run them through the list of who the suitors are. And at some point, I believe the strongest bidder will be examined. And of course, uh, you know, the 180 days get over on 10th February. Uh, the uh, the uh, IDBI had taken uh, uh, the company to NCLT on 10th August. In fact, NCLT has, had accepted the bid of insolvency of IDBI on 10th August. So 180 days means 10th February. So I think everybody will have to wait on a little bit more. If I understand if more expressions of interest are likely to continue to come in, uh, this is still a little way off mm. in terms of who emerges as the top bidder. Right now, it's difficult to say that this company is the strongest bidder or the other one. This is too initial a stage. Yeah, I would imagine. I would imagine. And I think it's only fair to, uh, uh, to not jump to those or rush to those conclusions just yet. Uh, Manisha Natarajan, always a pleasure. Many thanks for breaking that story here for us. In fact, as Manisha was pointing out, JSW, one of those companies that has put in an expression of interest here is Kevin Lee in conversation with Sajan Jindal. Uh, uh, in fact, he's right there with him. Uh, remember, Jindal had created a stir with his tweets on the current insolvency process against large defaulters. He called for a ban on trading of firms or actually the shares that have been referred to the National Company Law Tribunal. Uh, Kevin, you've got Sajan Jindal with you. You mentioned on the panel that these stressed assets, both in the power space and the steel space, uh, give you a sense of opportunity. Could you mention how many assets you're interested in for steel and for power? No, as I mentioned, uh, in steel, uh, there are many assets which are uh, uh, on the NCLT and many more probably would come. But we, are, uh, we have identified a couple of assets and we are only looking at them and uh, we are quite focused on those two assets. Uh, and in the power space, sir, you mentioned that you are interested in, on the thermal side. How many assets are you looking at uh, there? About uh, two or three assets on the, even on the power side as mm -hmm. we speak, uh, we are looking at. Um, but if, if there are more, then we can, we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll evaluate them.
but at the moment uh, the way we are looking is uh, probably two or three assets on the power sector and also there have been some issues when it comes to i think banks taking haircuts when companies like yourself are interested in these assets mm -hmm. we've seen recapitalization which should help out with that but you also uh, taken to twitter to make some points about what you think of the insolvency code and changes that should be made do you think that the insolvency board is seriously considering this and do you think things should get easier for companies like yourself looking at stressed assets in the future no i think uh, the because it's a new law and uh, a lot of suggestions are being considered by the uh, the nclt as well as uh, the uh, the other uh, rbi and stuff like that because uh, what is very important is that there has to be a transparent and a, uh, a, a standard format for for bidding for everybody for every asset it should not be uh, different for different situations and different plans then it gets very difficult and the banks uh, in the in the end will lose uh, they won't get the right value so it's it's always good i mean we 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 don't need to reinvent the wheel we have to follow what's happening globally and uh, just uh, just 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 follow that and and uh, follow that that process also specifically with bank recapitalization coming in and psb is now will have uh, the opportunity to take more haircuts or rather the space to take more haircuts do you think this should accelerate the process of companies like yourself acquiring stressed assets no i think uh, the uh, the banks are uh, very keen to uh, push through this process and uh, to settle these uh, these uh, cases where uh, you know there is mpa and there is uh, big problems so um, uh, banks are very keen so i don't see any reason for for these this process to be delayed uh, by when do you think we can start seeing acquisitions coming through because we've seen of course a lot of expressions of interest and there is a, a procedure to follow but by when do you think we'll actually see concrete deals happening so i also don't know because we are all uh, in the same boat but i think uh, over the next 6 months we should see some deals uh, going through Well, that is Sajjan Dindal there of JSW, one of 